And another contestant has entered the arena. Today we are talking about Ottawa Senators forward Vladimir Tarasenko, and as if I've already pissed off enough Senators fans today, let's go out there and talk about the updates as to Tarasenko and his entire trade conversation, because this is a player who's doing a pretty alright job this year, and who's signed to a one-year deal, making $5 million this season alone. He's got no trade protection on the contract at 32 years old, and his 38 points in 55 games played is pretty impressive. But, as we had talked about, there is a new update in regards to him and his contract status, because David Peñota earlier today tweeted out that like Adam Henrique in Anaheim, the expectation is that Vladimir Tarasenko will be moved by the Sens ahead of the deadline. Speaking to those that are close to him, Tarasenko is open to a trade and will waive his no-trade clause for a cup contender. And if you wanted a little bit more insight as to how Tarasenko has been playing, the first reply here, AFP Analytics, Tarasenko is pretty much the same type of player this year as he was last year. He's going to help provide some scoring for a contender in their top nine, but his defensive play leaves a little bit to be desired. And you can see that comparable players, you've got Killorn, Zuccarello, Zucker, I mean, they're all kind of in that same range of being alright middle six players, but Tarasenko this season being able to produce in the ways that he has while also playing for an Ottawa Senators team that has been pretty lackluster, it's pretty impressive, I would say. 38 points on pace for about 55. Last year, he had 21 points in 31 games after getting traded to the Rangers, and 29 points in 38 games to the Blues. Just two years ago, though, he was an over-point-per-game guy as an 82-point scorer in 75 games played. So we all kind of recognize that Tarasenko, especially since coming back from the injuries that slowed him down towards the end of the 2020s, he's always been a very good player. He's still very capable today. May not be the best defensively, but at 32 years old and 5 million bucks, he can't really go out there and expect more. He's a very solid player. To help us out even further, we have ourselves this piece published on ProHockeyRumors.com that dissects the conversation pretty well, actually. Reporting from Post Media's Bruce Garriock multiple times this season indicated that the 32-year-old may have preferred to stick with the Sens for the rest of the season, but now he is likely to be on the move before the March 8th trade deadline. The article then talks about how because Tarasenko signed with Ottawa, a lot of people were saying maybe he would have been traded anyway. Like, at the beginning of the year, nobody was really expecting Ottawa to be too cup contention worthy, but if they weren't, which they aren't, then Tarasenko could find himself in some sort of a move. The six-time 30-goal scorer surprisingly struggled to secure a commitment when the floodgates opened on July 1st, leading to him changing agents less than a week into the new year. He settled in Ottawa and their offer of complete trade deadline protection, allowing him to dictate his destiny if they decided to move him at the deadline. While his days of routinely potting 30 goals a season are behind him after multiple significant shoulder surgeries in 2019 and 2020 with the Blues, he's been a solid complimentary top six piece in Ottawa with 15 goals and 23 assists. Any team acquiring Tarasenko is getting a similar talent to what the Rangers picked up from the Blues last year. He's a solid middle six scoring winger with cup experience, and if the Sens opt to retain half of his salary, then a $2.5 million asset in this player could be very, very valuable. So, Tarasenko, good piece. What teams could be involved here? Well, we had ourselves one inkling as to a conversation that's going on. NHL Network a few days ago did five hypothetical trades for Hannafin, Henrik, Tanev, Gensel, and Tarasenko. It's interesting interesting because they did predict the Dallas Stars to get Chris Tanev, so good on NHL Network for getting the scoop there. But if you scroll down to their hypothetical trade for Vladimir Tarasenko, they do have him going to the Vegas Golden Knights for a second round pick and forward Brendan Brisson, the fourth best prospect in the Knights system. Now, there are some replies to this tweet that say that it's not really that great for Ottawa to do this. Why would they want to? They should just re-sign Tarasenko. But with the news now that Tarasenko is willing to wave and he wants to go to a cup contender, I think it's more likely than not that the Ottawa Senators maybe get a little bit of a lesser valued package for Tarasenko. Not because Tarasenko isn't valuable himself, but because now that we know that he wants out, that pretty much reduces whatever leverage you had in these conversations. Like, it's a lot easier for a team to say, okay, well, your guy wants out. He wants to play for a cup contending team like us, so we're not going to give you what you're going to ask for. We're not going to give you the moon and the stars, whatever prospects, whatever it is that you want. We'll just give you a smaller package. Here, a second and Brandon Brisson, take it or leave it. They have no choice. He wants to leave. He wants to play for a cup contender, and this may be one of the last years in his career where he'll be capable of doing that. He's 32 years old, so it's not really like he's going to get any better 
better as the years go on. And to be frank, the fact that he even signed a one-year contract in Ottawa in the first place was pretty indicative as to where everything was going. The cap is going to rise by a lot this upcoming offseason in the next year. So Tarasenko signing a one-year deal and playing pretty well in the one year that he had signed for is actually a pretty smart move. It allows him to get traded to a contender at the end of this season, and next year when the cap is higher, he can get even more money on maybe a longer three-, four-year deal instead of that one-year deal that he had signed now. If he had signed three or four years today, or not today, but last year, then he wouldn't be able to take advantage of the rising cap and get as much money as he could have. So, honestly, it's a pretty smart move for Tarasenko. Furthermore, to this point, though, after the David Peñota tweet from earlier today was published, you had a lot of Rangers fans going out there and saying that they wanted Tarasenko to be brought back to New York City. And this is an interesting idea that I saw so many Rangers fans bring up. Now, I know what you're thinking, because with this entire Tarasenko thing and the Rangers, you could say, all right, well, because the Rangers have cap problems, you could talk about his $5 million AV salary, maybe retain 50%, and maybe try to get a third team involved there. Retain even more dollars, because if you get the Chris Tanev treatment, 75% salary retained, then Tarasenko at what is it going to be $1.125 million? That's a really good deal. The Rangers should do that, right? Well, thing is, they're kind of not allowed to. And here's why. Adam Herman went out there and tweeted this out from two days ago, but I've seen some conflicting information, so I reached out to Puckpedia. If the Rangers want to acquire Tarasenko, they will have to do so while taking his entire $5 million cap hit. The Sens cannot retain any percentage of that cap hit, nor can any other team. The reason for this is because teams are not allowed to reacquire a player with cap retention within one calendar year of that player having been on their reserve list. Tarasenko's last day on the New York reserve list was on June 30th, 2023. He became a UFA, thereby leaving the list on July 1st. Could the Rangers still trade for Tarasenko? Yes, as long as they take on his entire $5 million cap hit. Theoretically, a trade is possible. Knowing the Rangers' cap limitations and the desire to add multiple players, though, it seems unlikely. Still trying to get insight into this because I still have questions about the language of the CBA, but this is as far as I understand at the moment. So because of that one year, 12 months entire ruling with the CBA, players are not allowed to be reacquired by a team with salary cap retention within the year of them being on the team. It is kind of unfortunate because this entire Tarasenko thing with salary retained goes down the drain. If the Rangers really wanted to make this trade work, they would have to acquire him at the full salary cap. Meanwhile, for a team like Vegas, they don't really need to do that. They could just take him on with 50% salary retained or 75% retained if any other team were to go out there and help out the Golden Knights. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're an Ottawa Senators fan, how do you feel about the idea of Tarasenko being willing to waive and seeing him potentially get traded some other team by the time the trade deadline comes? It's more likely now than anything, but now that we have our confirmation, what are your thoughts on the idea of the Vegas Golden Knights getting him? What are your thoughts on the New York Rangers? If you're a New York Rangers fan, then what are your opinions about this entire thing? Do you think it's even possible? I'm leaning towards no, because it seems like the Rangers are kind of targeting whomever it is that's available. But if it is Tarasenko, let me know your thoughts on that entire idea, bringing him back. What are your opinions on what that would bring to your team? Of course, Vegas fans, you can chime in as well. What are your thoughts on acquiring a guy like Tarasenko? You guys have stone out for a while, so there's a little bit of extra cap dollar maneuvering that you can do with this LTIR stuff. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Trolls 99. And bye.